Let us pray. Speak to us, O Lord. Speak to us in the waiting, the watching, the hoping, the longing, the sorrow, the sighing, the rejoicing. Speak to us by your word in these Advent days and walk with us until the day of your coming. Amen. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. An hour into my work day on January 28, 1986, the heavens were torn open when the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its flight. I was sitting at my desk when the church phone rang. I heard the church secretary gasp. Her husband had called to let us know what had just occurred. That evening, as I watched the news, it was heartbreaking to witness the faces of the family members in the viewing stands staring up at the broken sky as they realized the disaster that had befallen them and their loved ones. Sometimes the world is not okay. Yesterday, my hometown of El Paso, Texas was featured on the front page of the Washington Post again. Just over a year ago, a mass shooter had targeted Latinos at a Walmart, killing 23 persons. And now COVID is killing hundreds daily across the city. The morgues have run out of space. One major crematorium is out of commission due to overuse. When the Northwood Session made the decision on March 14th to cease worship at all church activities, we had no idea those two weeks would stretch into months of separation and isolation and that we would be preparing Thanksgiving dinner for an army of one, two, or maybe four to five people. And we would not have the joy of staring into a new grandchild's eyes with wonder. Sometimes the world is not okay. Wildfires burning out of control around the globe, hundreds of children separated for a lifetime from their parents, cities filled with protesters still seeking social justice, one refugee crisis after another, and a weird derecho thing robbing a Midwest city of 50% of its tree canopy as grain silos were swept miles off their foundations. Who ever heard of such a weird thing doing so much damage? This week, I counted 33 major global disasters occurring in the last year, not to mention the smaller ones that I saw that I totally missed in the news. In recent months, many of you have given up or lost jobs, incomes, beloved friends and families and pets. You've lost them who are also like family. And some of us are barely hanging on emotionally from so much trauma in our daily lives. Sometimes the world is not okay. Yet here we are. <laughs> Bam! Entering Advent once again. And once again, Advent is complicated. This year, the lectionary begins with Jesus' words in Mark's Gospel. The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Jesus is describing a state of catastrophe you and I wish we didn't recognize in the world around us. But we do. At least we do now. At times in the last few months, the world has felt void of God, and we have been shaken. Each Advent season, I have been asked by more than one of you, 
Why does Advent always have to begin on such a sour note? Isn't that what Lent is for? If you are a Facebook user, as I am, you are aware that many had their Christmas trees up and decorated long before Thanksgiving. Usually Larry and I put up the outdoor lights at the last minute. One year it was just a few days before Christmas only because company was about to arrive and we wanted the house to look pretty for them. But this last Friday, day before yesterday, Larry and I put up double the amount of our usual outdoor Christmas lights, weeks earlier than we normally get around to it because of our church activities. It seems more than ever that we all need a little Christmas, right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols at the spinet. Yes, we need a little Christmas. But the biblical reality is this. The birth of the Savior commonly perceived to be about joy and peace and beauty always begins with the end of the world. And every year on the first Sunday of Advent, the lectionary gives us an apocalypse, some story about the end of the world from one of the Gospels. This year, it's from Mark. This is what's happening. This is the passage in Mark's gospel. It's actually called by Bible scholars, the little apocalypse. It's the name given to this teaching by Jesus on the Mount of Olives. He is describing to his listeners the events that will take place when he returns in glory at the end of time. This time around, this year, as Advent approaches, Jesus' little end-of-the-world chat might not be coming to us as such a shock. I don't know about you, but to me this Advent feels a bit more real, more somber than usual. Perhaps this year, more than any other year, we need more than ever the gift of lamentation, the sorrowful writing that the biblical writers offer. We need a reality check. If we allow it, the radical honesty of scripture can make us honest too. During Advent, especially this Advent, we are challenged to stop pretending that everything is okay. We need to get real. Debbie Thomas tells us that one of the gifts of Advent is the permission to tell the truth, even if that truth is laced with sorrow. We are invited to describe life on earth as it is. We are called to speak the whole truth. We need God. We need God to show up. We need God to stay. We need God to love, hold, deliver, and restore us. This first Sunday of Advent invites us to recognize that some endings are real. Things may never go back to normal after COVID, whatever our normal might have been. We don't know yet how this one will end. Yet the Christ who will return at the end of time somehow stands with us in each ending we experience in this life. Every year, Advent calls us to practice the apocalypse, to look for the presence of Christ who enters into our every loss. The one who comes to us in the midst of our devastation. The one who gathers us up when our world has shattered. The one who offers the healing that is a foretaste of the wholeness God is working to bring about, not only at the end of time, but also in this time, in this place, on this day. 
as this Advent begins, something is, is there something in your life that is coming to an end? How might you look for the presence of Christ who is coming to you in that place? Writer Jen Richardson offers us a blessing for when the world as we know it appears to be ending. Look, the world is always ending somewhere. Somewhere the sun has come crashing down. Somewhere it has gone completely dark. Somewhere it has ended with the gun, the knife, the fist. Somewhere it has ended with the slammed door, the shattered hope. Somewhere it has ended with the utter quiet that follows the news from the phone, the television, the hospital room. Somewhere it has ended with a tenderness that will break your heart. But listen, this blessing means to be anything but morose. It has not come to cause despair. It is simply here because there is nothing a blessing is better suited for than an ending. Nothing that cries out more for a blessing than when a world is falling apart. This blessing will not fix you, will not mend you, will not give you false comfort. It will not talk to you about one door opening when another one closes. It will simply sit itself beside you among the shards and gently turn your face toward the direction from which the light will come, gathering itself about you as the world begins again. Advent is always complicated, and every Advent begins with an ending. Mark's Gospel reminds us here at the threshold of Advent, such times call us to trust that even in the dark, God is at work, is traveling toward us, and has somehow already arrived. Amen and amen.